Let's take a look at one of my favorite computers of all time. You're about to see a few people learn to use the newest, most advanced business computer in the world. If you know how to point, you already know how to use it. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. Introduced at the start of 1984, the Mac forever changed the computer industry. My love for the Mac began in 2007. I was in third grade looking at a book in the school library where I discovered a picture of a Macintosh with a small paragraph about it. I was fascinated by it. A year later, my parents gave me my very first classic Mac for Christmas. Skip ahead almost two decades, I no longer have the Macintosh classic from my childhood. I instead have an immaculate example of a Macintosh 512K from 1984. When the Macintosh was released in January 84, the machines all shipped with a memory capacity of a mere 128K. Macintosh buyers very quickly realized that 128K was not enough to get the most out of the machine. In September 84, Apple released the Macintosh 512K, which brought the memory capacity up to 512K. I stumbled across my Mac 512 on eBay listed for an insanely great price. Listed as not working as the screen was dead, it appeared to be in great shape and was complete. It even included the rare carrying bag. Confident in my abilities to repair the screen, I ordered it. Knowing that the screen was dead, I went to console 5 and ordered a capacitor kit for the analog board and a tool needed to open the Mac up. Once the Mac arrived, I verified that the screen didn't work. After a couple of minutes, I noticed a burning smell and felt that the top cover was super hot. I wanted to start with the simple things first. I replaced every capacitor on the analog board and decided to give it a try. Nothing had changed. While it was on, I noticed the burning smell again and traced it to the horizontal output transistor on the analog board. The transistor became super hot after only being on for a minute. At this point, I consulted the 1992 book, The Dead Mac Scrolls, for an answer. Before long, I came to page 17, which described my problem very closely. The Dead Mac Scrolls said to replace the flyback transformer and horizontal output transistor. I went online and ordered both parts. Surprisingly, you can still buy new old stock Mac flyback transformers at a steep cost. But I'm a single successful guy, and I've got to have my freedom, so I bought it. The screen came to life after I installed the new components. After playing with it for a few weeks, I noticed the machine gets pretty warm after a few minutes. This is because Steve Jobs insisted that the Macintosh not have a fan. Consequently, this caused a lot of early Macs to suffer heat-related component failure, such as dead flyback transformers. Third-party cooling systems were available, but looked pretty ridiculous. I didn't want my beautifully restored Mac to have an ugly box sitting on top of it, so I came up with something a little more creative. The original Mac has vents all over the top as it was designed to be convection cooled. The two vent ports on the back of the machine would be perfect for internal fans if they were small enough. I went on Amazon and purchased two very small Noctua fans. These fans run on 12 volts, so it would be easy enough to tap them into the 12 volt rail on the analog board. 
Once they showed up, I opened the Mac up. As with any CRT device, the CRT must be discharged before poking around them. Take an alligator clip and connect it to the grounding wire in the Mac, and the other end to a flathead screwdriver. Stick the screwdriver under the anode cap and contact the anode. Once you hear a pop, the CRT is safe. Next, I put hot glue on the corners of the fans. I position them in the case behind the vents. The left fan is intake and the right fan is exhaust. The intake fan blows cool air on the flyback transformer which gets pretty hot otherwise. The Noctua fan kit came with wires to connect them. I attached the ground wire to the chassis. Using a multimeter, I located a good 12 volt connection on the analog board. I soldered the fans to that point and powered the machine on. Both fans came to life. After closing the machine up and letting it run for an hour, the fans did a great job of cooling the Mac. I feel this is a very important mod as it will greatly extend the life expectancy of this computer. Let's take a quick look at the bag. The Macintosh was introduced with this carrying bag and it's honestly a great way to carry the machine around. It has a spot for the Mac of course, the keyboard, mouse, floppy disks, and manuals. It also has a very cool embroidered Apple logo. These bags are hard to come by, so I'm very glad to have one this nice in my collection. The Mac 512K is a machine I have loved since childhood. I'm very happy that I found mine and was able to restore it and add some cool mods. I hope to have this machine for many years to come. Thanks for watching.